it's Wendy from Finger Sticks Gallery again. Um, we're going to do something kind of uh, crazy today. This is the biggest canvas that I have ever done. It's a uh, concrete board. We had a project that we were doing and we had some leftovers, as you've probably seen in my other videos. This sucker is going to be 30 inches by 24 and a, almost 25 inches. So I love doing concrete board. It's a little tricky to hang, but it's so durable and it won't sag. So we're going to do four flowers. We're going to do four of the blowouts uh, that's been kind of popular. I don't know if I'm going to do a Dutch pour yet. Uh, we'll just see once I get the colors laid out if I'm going to have room. So we're going to do um, just four. And this background is... It's not bright white. I added a little bit of brown, so it's just a little bit creamy, a little off-white. I already noticed I had a bunch of bubbles because I already coated this, so we're going to pop the bubbles. And uh, I, since it's a white-ish background, I already see I have tons and tons of little oddball debris floating in here. So on the, um, sorry, I'm trying to think and talk and record at the same time. On the concrete board, I already uh, painted it and primed it. So the primer's dry. I painted over it so it won't, you know, suck the paint down because it's pretty porous. Now we're going to do Let's see, we're gonna do red, probably purple, yellow, and blue, or close to that. So I got some junk on the ground. I didn't realize I was gonna be doing this big a one. Tuck my shirt in a little bit. So um, I may have to check the camera and move the camera over because where I'm recording, I don't really have a good spot to put um, the camera back any farther. So anyway, we're going to see how this works. This is going to be super fun. If you're afraid to do a large area, just remember it's only a canvas. It's the same as an eight by 10. Okay. Just think of it as an eight by 10. You just have to use a little more paint. So, okay. So the basic color scheme I'm going to be doing is the, the darker colors are all going to be on the outside to blow out. And then uh, I have three, three colors of each. So here's the red. Actually, we'll start with, and I know I should measure. You guys are going to cringe, but I'm not going to measure the flowers. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it because if it's a little abstract, yeah, that's okay. So we'll do, and I always tell myself, gosh, don't use as much paint next time because I'm really bad about using too much paint and you don't have to, if you wanted to do a Dutch pour, we would push the paint over and I might still do that when we're done and then blow it out. And you just don't want a whole heck of a lot of paint to do that. Okay. So there's the red and then blue, purple, yellow. Actually we'll do yellow in this corner. So we'll do blue, I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, purple. Ah, we'll do purple up there. So I, I think, well, this one's the copper. That's one of my favorites, but these are all a mix of paints. So they are going to be Apple Barrel Folk Art, Anita's, uh, I think that's all I have. So, oh, and last time, my very last video I did for you guys, I was going to try the new Deco Art Pouring Medium, which I did not very happy with it. I'll show you really quick. I knew the paint in the center was a little bit thick, but it actually didn't crack where I thought all the thick paint was. It cracked everywhere down here. It cra I mean, it's cracked and crazed just everywhere. Even in, um, the really cool cells that we had there, the feathering, the lacing, it just, it cracked. It did not work very well for me. Now it looks really cool. If you see this in person, I, it, it just, it looks like epoxy almost. It's almost translucent. So it looks really, really neat, 
but it turned out terrible. I did not want it to turn out like this. So I might love it. The colors really pop. I think with the deco art pouring medium, they really make the colors more vibrant. But for me, it did not have the effect that I was going for. So I thought I would share that with you. Some people swear by it and good for you. If you have success, then I'm happy for you. Okay. So that's kind of why I do these to show people my trials, my errors, my tribulations, my success stories. And more importantly, because if we have people that are a little bit afraid to try something, I don't mind trying it for you. So again, don't be afraid to comment. Probably should see if you can see this. Okay. Yeah. Don't be afraid to comment and tell me what you guys want to see. So again, these are all a mix of a diff bunch of different colors. Um, some are primary colors, some are pre-mixed colors. Most of them I've mixed and pre-mixed and so they're, uh, probably only have a few that are the normal out of the bottle color. So then these yellows, uh, this one, I think I did mix with, um, it's one of the gold. It's one of the really bright, I'm not a fan of it because it almost looks fake and it, I mixed it with yellow and I think it'll make a really pretty flower. So, and I'm okay if we get some cells in these because the cells in the flowers look really pretty. So I'm probably, well, I don't know. I'm, maybe I will not torch yet. We won't torch. And then in the center of all these guys, I mixed a little bit of, oh, I don't remember what it was. It was the Folk Art Metallic. It was one of the golds. I think it was the antique gold. And a little bit of the, um, it's like a gray, I, I don't have the bottle anymore or else I tell you what it was, but it was almost like a whitish gray metallic. Mixed it with my tried and true. I went right back to the 50% Floetrol, 50% Elmer's glue because of the deco art disaster that I came across. And again, it works great for some people. Uh, it is for whatever reason, it just did not agree with me and the paints I was using. So I'll try it again. So I do want to have one common element in all of these, and that is going to be the very center of the flower. So they're all going to have that. So my 50% Floetrol, 50% glue mix um, is also pretty closely mixed to 50% paint. So the pouring medium that I mix and 50% paint. That yellow. Looks like it needs a little bit more. Okay, so this is kind of in lieu of the spring because all of our flowers are coming up and all of our sheep have had their babies and so I'm doing a springy type of deal and turkey baster to what I'm going to use to blow out and I'll have to flip it because it's so enormous and it's really heavy. So I'm just going to start blowing it. We're not going to do a Dutch pour. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, hopefully I won't lose my sun. Oh, I'm going to take my sunglasses off actually. Okay. All right. So here we go. And yeah, so without um, doing a, a boob smash, I will flip the canvas around. Realize the only time you guys can see me are when my cheeks are puffed out, so. Sorry if you can't see that. There's no real good way to do this. And you'll notice there's a little bit of splatters. Those are really easy to fix. We're just gonna scrape it off and then pour some white paint over there. Maybe I'll try. Ooh, I better not. You will be seeing a boob smash before too long, I can tell. All right. So 
my mom and dad love this technique. So um, I might be doing more flowers for them because it's really fun and it's, it gives little cells. It gives just a really cool look. So I'll take a close up here in a second. Now, a lot of you um, who, if you have a breathing problem or your lungs just aren't very strong or you're sick like I have been all winter, you can use um, a little fish tank pump, maybe water your paints down a little bit and blow it. You can use a small hair dryer with the, the nozzle on the end. You can use a small air compressor, a ton of different things. I, <laughs> while I'm, I'm still young and I'm getting better, I have a little bit of lung power. That's why I use this. So you can use pretty much anything else you want as long as it has enough pressure. Gosh, they are turning out so pretty and this ton of negative space is super awesome. Okay, so almost this leaf needs to go up. Okay, so I am actually really careful where I push it because the center color, I'm trying to keep a little bit of that center gold in the middle of each one. And like this didn't get mixed all the way. So as you, as you know, if you look at an iris, they have, you know, more than one leaf that um, are on their, their petal that overlap. So you could blow that out for another little petal. See? So just go around and look who needs an extra petal. And it's okay if they're not perfect. So don't worry if like this little leaf, he's a little different, or this one's a little bit skinnier than the rest. Flowers are like that. They're not always perfect. And to be honest, if your painting has a little more character, it's more realistic anyway, in my opinion. It doesn't look computer generated. Oh, one thing I should tell you, none of these colors have any oil in them. Um, for the cells, I usually use this uh, treadmill silicone. You don't always have to, though, because the Floetrol gives really, really cool little cells. So I'll show you some of these close-ups. And again, there's no oil, so it just is, it's kind of doing this. Granted, uh, there's probably some of my spit in here that's maybe reacting. I don't know, but it looks pretty. Oh, but I think I just heard my husband come home. Oh, he would be thrilled if he knew he was on YouTube. Okay. So if you want to feather out the edges a little bit too, you can just be really careful because when you do, like there's just such a stark contrast, you can feather them out really lightly, but just remember you're going to mix all your colors together if you do that. So like him, he looks ripped and kind of cool. So maybe I'll pick on somebody else. Maybe this guy. Yeah, right here. So you can feather them out a little bit and make them look neat. So I love it. I think these two are a little bit bigger. So maybe I will push these out just a little more to make them a little bigger. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm getting in the way. Okay, so I love it. So I'm not going to bore you guys too awful much with me um, cleaning the canvas because this will take a little bit, but just take your finger and just go bloop, bloop, and just kind of dab the colors and dab them off. So I'm going to give a shout out to all my friends and family who are watching because somebody let them in that I have a YouTube channel. So hi, mom. Hi, Gretchen. A couple pretty big supporters of mine, so. Okay, so yeah, just dab them. Dab the little colors off. So I will clean this up a little bit more. I don't want it to be absolutely perfect. Like that little guy is really cool. Um, Because the more meticulous you are with it, the more you're going to drive yourself nuts if you're anything like me. And it has to be perfect if you're doing it that way. In this case... I don't want it to be perfect. 
because flowers are not perfect. But I do want it to look clean. So, and then yeah, I'll just go back and uh, dab everything with the paintbrush. So, okay, I will show you a little bit of a close up and I'm sorry if this is loud. I, I have a very high tech camera system in my, my studio and it consists of, I will show you, an ammo can, paper towel tube, and painter's tape. So we're high class here. Okay, so here, actually, I'm going to show you the blue. The blue metallic is having a really cool cell reaction. I'm going to try to get you guys out of the shadow here, but here's the purple. That purple is just beautiful. And remember that your paints are always going to dry a little bit darker. And the red and pink. So anyway, yeah, I'm really happy with it, you guys. I'm going to get a really far shot, go back as far as I can. The sucker is pretty big. And yeah, my, my gallery is an absolute mess right now. We did spring cleaning and the other side of my shop is sparkling clean. This side's, well, a mess. Here's all the colors that I used. Anyway, guys, okay, that's it. Um, don't be afraid to use this big, huge board and we'll see you next time.